Will it happen or will it not? We are talking about the summit between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Both leaders seem to be pushing for the face-to-face -face meeting. Politics takes no holiday. And joining us this morning are Republican strategist Jackie Bally and Democratic strategist Dallas Jones. Good morning to you both. Good, Good morning. morning. Now, over the past two weeks, we've heard yes, no, yes, no, <laughs> yes, possibly now it's yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Where do we stand? Well, we have a couple of officials who are actually in North Korea now, and more officials are going. So that's a positive move. You've seen the president of North Korea and South Korea. They've met twice within a month. So that's also a positive move. And the president has said that there were strong protocols that we had in place. And at first, Kim Jong-un was not willing to meet some of those standards. But now he is. So we are, we are moving forward towards having having these discussions and frankly this is the closest that we've seen anything like this and the closest we've gotten to trying to denuclearize the uh, the Korean peninsula well, look, I'll say we, we've watched this go back and forth almost like a, a ping pong match over the last couple of weeks, unfortunately. And, and frankly, um, the, the North Korean and South Korean president met because they were trying to figure out actually what happened. Um, what we saw was um, a, 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 a few words that were exchanged in regards to a military uh, exercise that took place between South Korea and, and the United States. The North Korean um, president uh, clearly in, in an effort to uh, talk talk peace didn't take kindly to that. Uh, the president sent him a letter canceling the summit and then we find ourselves um, when the North Korean president didn't blow up and actually uh, tried to uh, uh, appear somewhat reasonable, our president said, oh well that's a very nice gesture, maybe we'll meet anyways. This is the type of diplomacy that's now coming out of this White House. And so I, I don't know if I'd call it protocols or whatever it may be. I will agree with Jackie that this is the closest that we've ever been from any U.S. president actually sitting down with the leader of North Korea. That is a step in the pro positive direction. Democrats, the country, was rooting for President Trump to make the right decision on this one. Looks like we'll still wait to find out which way the ping pong game goes. Denuclearization, you mentioned that. And over the weekend, I read something regarding the denuclearization, meaning American forces and American nuclear uh, weapons out of that area in addition to North Korea. Well, that's part of the issue. We have to decide what denuclearization really means for both countries. Uh, as you just mentioned, we do have, uh, we want denuclearization from American standards, but we also know that during the last two presidents, three presidents, Kim Jong-un has unfortunately uh, acquired a very large nuclear arsenal. And so part of these discussions will be how we will denuclearize his arsenal and how we will make sure that he does not use it for something that's not a good. And we do know that Kim Jong-un, when we talk reasonable, that's not usually a word that we will use with that man. So the fact that we are coming this close, we are applauding our president. Well, I, I, I wouldn't definitely not say that he's he's a reasonable person, but I think in this particular instance, um, this is the first we've ever seen of this unreasonable person reasonably looking at the issue of diplomacy, reasonably looking at the issue of denuclearizing North Korea. Now, whether or not that'll happen, we, we, we it, the, the story's just yet to be told, but it begins with a conversation, a dialogue. We still yet to have an ambassador appointed to South Korea in the year of the, uh, over a year of this president and being in office. In order for diplomacy to be established and be stable, we have to have experts in that region that are advising and leading this strategy. That's not happening. So uh, when we talk about something as, as, as many lives that are at risk in that area of the world, we can't kind of just toss it up and, and, and look at it as, as, as some types of whimsical thing. We need experts to help guide this policy, and that has not happened in this White House. Well, it's an issue that is going to be <laughs> with us at least until the second week in June. So we'll just have to see what happens. But thank you both for coming in and weighing in on this issue. Thanks for having us. Thank you.